Well, hi, everybody. It's the first week of the school year and the first week of the Syracuse football season. A chance to catch up with Director of Athletics John Wildhack here in his office. And, John, this is an exciting time every year. You see more and more people and cars on campus. Uh, excitement for the football season is at a fever pitch right now. No question, Matt. You know, the pulse, the energy around campus is great. Obviously, around the programs, you know, I think it's unprecedented in the time that I've been here in terms of what Coach Fran, the staff, and the team have done in the off season, but now it's time to play. Sure, it's a transition time. Uh, you famously, of course, uh, hired Coach Brown, and we've heard the story of how that uh, went together. Seemingly every button he's pushed in the off season has worked out, and now it's that time where that's over. It is game week, and uh, it all counts from here. Yeah. What's your observation of uh, the preparation for the season so I far? It's been a, I think it's been a really good camp. You know, physical, competitive. I like the energy, the practices. I like the tempo. Um, they're efficient. Um, I think we've got good leadership, right? And it's a combination of the leadership because we're returning guys, right? Guys like Marlo and Justin Barron, Sanko, you know, LaQuint, and then you have got, you know, Kyle McCord, Fadil, Diggs come in, and I think it's a really good leadership group. And it's been a good camp. It's going to be fascinating to watch that blend of uh, the old and the new and the newcomers and people to be playing their first game for Syracuse in the Dome on uh, Saturday and then how they meld over the, the course of the season. We'll get more into the football aspect of it uh, here in a second because uh, this is just the start of uh, a long run of an exciting uh, season ahead. It occurs to me for a lot of the fans, too, there will be some newness. The season will start in a lot of ways with the quad walk uh, out uh, on the, the quad two hours and 15 minutes before kickoff, which is at 3.30 on uh, Saturday. So we hope to see everybody out there uh, bright and early. Welcome the team. It's a welcome of Coach Brown and his group and kind of a send-off into the year. It's one of the things early, uh, early on is Coach Brown said, yeah, I want to do this. And he went over, kind of scouted it out himself, right, with Ryan Kelly, his director of ops. And... I think it's great for our fans to be able to welcome and, and again, just you know, support for the team. And Cuse and the Quad will open three hours before, so you, you know, Cuse and the Quad will be open. Go to the Quad Walk, watch your team come by, then be entertained by the band and watch, watch the other games and have something to, uh, to eat or, and drink. So yeah, I think awesome. it'll be a really festive and fun atmosphere. Of course, there's already been a conference game played, which got everybody's juices flowing a little early in Georgia Tech. Sure Syracuse's did. Week 2 opponent wins. That didn't hurt anything that they uh, knocked off uh, Florida State. That's uh, a good indication of how deep the, the conference is this year, and uh, we should have a barn burner here next Saturday. Well, I think that the, the ACC is, in my opinion, is, is really undervalued. Um, it's a really good league, and it's a really, really deep league. And you saw that um, Saturday in Dublin, and that was not a fluke. Right. You know, Georgia Tech's offensive and defensive line, you know, they controlled the line of scrimmage. They won the game. They deserve to win the game. So it's going to be a terrific test for us. Yeah, seven. September 7th, day that Dwight Freeney's uniform number will be honored in the Dome as well. So lots of good stuff going on for that one. Let's get back into this uh, opening week and the idea that there's really kind of a first look here. It's a reopening right. of the Dome, probably the biggest refresh uh, that there's been. you got the, the roof is a couple years old now and uh, different things that have been touched up, but the entire reseeding uh, is really a sea change uh, decades uh, in the making, John, and uh, I know pictures are leaking out and people are getting excited about that, but uh, we think there's going to be a pretty big wow factor when people see it for the first well, time. I think when you walk in, it looks like a different building. I mean, you walk in the JMA Wireless Dome, it looks like a professional arena, and it looks great. Um, so it's going to be more comfortable for our fans. It looks better. Um, we've done a number of things with the receipt, which went incredibly well. We're thankful for our fans um, because receipts are a challenge, and our sure. fans were great. We created more premium areas, right? Um, the 50-yard line behind our bench, which has access to the Kuhn Game Day Lounge presented by Hidden Level Pregame. Um, in the end zone, the west end zone, again, where we have the orange section blocked off there, that's access to Club 4-4. Um, Myron Victory Court is under construction mm -hmm. in the east end zone. Uh, looked at that the other day. It's going to be a fantastic space, not only for athletics, but our campus community. That'll come online later this fall. So if you look at all that, and then we've also put uh, touchscreen wayfinding in the mm -hmm. dome to help people navigate their way around uh, the dome. It looks like a different building, and I'm excited for our fans to experience it. I think they will really, really enjoy it. Uh, individual chair back seats throughout, wall to wall, 42,000 plus seats. And you'll see the orange ones that John pointed out. Those are premium seats connected to various hospitality areas, as, as John listed. 
really the first time, not counting suites, which have been there since day one, when you think about a and premium. And refreshed all the suites, too. Yeah, right, so every single suite's been redone. Yeah, the idea that there's a premium approach, even on a single game basis right. in some cases, uh, the introduction of premium seats was important for what reason and wh why and, and what feedback are you getting? There's two reasons. You know, fans want that. There's a section of your fans, they want a premium experience, so the demand is there and we need to offer it to them. It's also, candidly, it's a way for us to increase our revenue. And every athletic director around the country is finding ways to increase their revenue. But it's, it's driven a lot by there's the demand for it. And while we have that, we still have a $99 season ticket which is the lowest point of entry, I think, of any power force school in the country. So we want to price and be able to provide the experience that fits our fans' needs and desires. Yeah, a little bit of something for everybody there, uh, depending on where you want to sit and what your uh, price range is. Now, another thing that people will notice, there's several, uh, but when they come in, the big part of college sports, of course, is what vibe do you get from the students and the band and that sort of thing. And there was a move to consolidate that, John. Not only consolidate it, but move it. It's all at the uh, opposite end from when uh, where basketball would be played. So that they've moved to the other end of the dome, but are kind of connected in uh, contiguous sections. Why was that done? I think, number one, we want to increase the size of our student section because we've sold out uh, for the past three years, so we're able to increase capacity for egress and ingress for them. It makes it easier. They've been coming in that way anyway. Yeah, right? so they come in that way anyway, so just, it's easier for them. Um, I also think that, you know, the West End Zone was incredibly, the traffic there was incredible. Um, so we can kind of balance the flow, and I think just the vibe throughout the building um, will be better, be a little, a little more balanced than maybe it was, Matt, when they were in the West End Zone. So I, I think it, we, we worked with Otto's Army. They were great in terms of here's what we want to do, here's why we think it's good for you. I think, again, when Myron Victory Court comes online, they can come in, grab their concession, right, whatever they want, go right to their seat. So I, I think uh, I think it'll be a move that the students uh, will enjoy. A lot of them are sure coming from the gym anyway, so sure. they can just just uh, swing their way uh, right in there. You know, from a football sense, everybody I think is getting reminded that when the, there's a buzz around football, it impacts the entire campus. There hasn't been a game played yet, but are, are you getting that kind of vibe here that people are excited, and because of that, it's, it tends to uh, raise all the boats a little bit? I think it impacts the community. Yeah. You know, it's just not, yes, certainly on campus, but also just going out throughout the community. You know, there, there is a buzz and there's an energy, um, and again, it's, it's kind of unprecedented in my time here. You know, we had it to some degree in 2019 when we came off the 10-win season in 18. But this is even, I think, a, you know, more more electric and, and broader based. In my mind, I'm thinking about the Dome first opening in 1980 and the buzz and the number of people we run into, John, in the community that say, hey, I was there the, the first game. I've had season tickets since 1980. This is like a new birth, right? There, there will be times when people will say decades from now they've had tickets since since this period because it, it does feel like that much of a, a refresh or a new building. Absolutely. Abs new, without question. New coach uh, coming down the pike as well. And I think Coach Brown in his own style kind of gives off that energy to, to everybody else. No question. And you know, one of the things when I was going through the process with Coach Fran, everybody I talked to, Matt, they said how authentic and how genuine he is. And, and he is. And he's just been he's been great to deal with. I really like the staff that he's assembled. I think they're good coaches. They're really smart people. I think the support staff, it's a strong support staff. We've added some positions there. We want to invest in that area. So, again, I, I like you need a really good infrastructure, and, and I think we built that infrastructure. Yeah, that's where you can see in terms of the impact it makes uh, across the board that contribution that's being made with the facility renovation, with the dome renovation, with uh, the new coaching staff and the types of things that are happening here. And then part of that, John, transitions into sust sustaining it, which I know in your mind comes back to fundraising and NIL and, and those types of things. Can you give us a, a big picture update on, on where you feel you are? Uh, because obviously NIL has been effective in building this roster and, and no you're going to need to continue that. You know, Kyle McCord's not here if we don't have a competitive NIL program. Fidel Diggs isn't here. Um, LaQuinn Allen's probably not here. Justin Barron's not here. So if you're going to be competitive, one of the things you need is it used to be all about facilities, yeah. and facilities still matter, and we're doing that with the Lally Athletics Complex and the Football Performance Center, but you need to be competitive with your NIL program. We've made great progress the past six months. We've had donors step up. We've had businesses step up. We need more businesses. Um, 
I tell you, Feldmeyer, the Feldmeyer Group company has been unbelievable. And Colby Clark and his team, they have been unbelievable with their NIL support. And we need more companies in this area and throughout the region, central New York, western New York, upstate New York, to support that because it will absolutely translate into us being competitive and us winning. And I, we have the right coaches, right? You look at Coach Fran, Coach Felisa, Coach Autry. We have the right coaches. We have the facilities now. If we're competitive in the NIL space, they will bring joy to this area. Yeah, you can tell uh, just the ramifications, like an exponential uh, kind of effect. And, uh, the, the and I think the other thing, too, with NIL, it's just, you know, it's, it's, yes, we spend a lot of time locally and regionally, but it's also national. Mm -hmm. So anybody can contribute. doesn't matter where you are. doesn't matter where your company is. Your company can work with our student athletes. It's really, really important that people lean into this. Way to have a little stake in the game. It is, and it's, it's, you know, it's retention number one. You know, ret and yet talk to any coach. It's retention number one, retaining your best. But then it impacts your recruiting. Because the reality is the recruit's going to come on campus, and they're going to ask, what's the NIL program here? And if the answer is, you know, hey, you play well and you do the right thing, they're going to, you know, it'll take good care of you, it will impact your recruiting. Interesting, and that's one of the roles that the coaches have, of course, is being prudent with that, being sure. efficient. Their skills of evaluation of talent get that to, to the right Absolutely people. Absolutely critical. And uh, you've got the right folks in those positions. All right, Ohio comes in back-to-back -back 10 win seasons for them. Uh, they've lost a, a lot of folks, speaking back to the, the business aspect of it, uh, too, but uh, should be awfully exciting in the Dome 330 on Saturday. Yeah, I can't, you know, again, I, I, I'm so excited for our fans to, to come in and see the JMA Wireless Dome and see, you know, see it just, it looks like a new building. And when you go back five years ago, before we did the roof, into where it is now, I mean, it, it is. It's, it's really, it's a new building. And, um, yeah, I, I, I can't wait for them to experience it. And uh, I hope we're going to have a season where it's really, really loud and it's a really difficult place to play and uh, that we get a lot of wins. Yeah, looking forward to it. Uh, seeing everybody in the Dome Saturday. John, thanks for the visit. Matt, I appreciate it. Go Orange. <laughs> See you Saturday. John Wildhack, the Orange, and the Bobcats this Saturday, 3.30 in the Dome.